This is Twit. Uh, Google has published a paper on the Google AI blog about using deep learning to inform differential diagnoses of skin diseases. This is AI is slowly marching into medicine. Getting we've seen uh, in the past that AI did a pretty good job uh, interpreting um, X-rays, doing the job of a radiologist. Um, general practitioners, when shown images of skin conditions, are between twenty-four and seventy percent accurate. Your 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 GP. If you're a dermatologist, it's much better, seventy-seven to ninety-six percent accurate. But a lot of people can't get to a dermatologist or they don't have the access to a dermatologist. So that's why there's this interest. It's not that dermatologists don't do a very good job. They know what they're looking at. Right. But it would help. Well, it would take me six to eight weeks to get into a dermatologist. Yes. So if I thought I had some sort of cancerous lesion. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I guess then it might be like, yes, this is 75% likely to be melanoma. Then I'd be like, ah. <laughs> well, how how soon before it's an app? You know, cancer app. It should be. So well, okay, so that's an interesting question. It, should it be because of this? Like, again, it, if we don't have the medical infrastructure to help me out, I see this. Then I go to my doctor. My doctor doesn't know how credible it is. Is this going to be FDA approved? I don't know. And the FDA. So I have my cardia. Has, well, yeah, right? my cardia. But that's, that has been and. Approved. It has been approved. It has been approved. And um, it doesn't just do a good EKG. It reads the EKG right. and says whether I'm an AFib right. in a reliable way because of machine learning. Oh, that's interesting. This is the uh, Alive Core product. It's, it's 99 bucks. Works with a it's smartphone. Did you get the new Cardia? K A R D. -I -A. What? Is there a new Cardia? I think there is. There is, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Alive Core. This is actually, this matters to me. Yeah. I think it's a, isn't it a watch? Let me, let me go Didn't to their website like a, um, and see livecore.com. I don't see anything. Oh, have there you, it is. Cardia 6L. Have you had occasion? Uh, oh yeah. There's more it? diodes. Oh yeah. There it is. Six views of the heart, six times the data. That's cool. Oh, it's a six lead EKG. So this was, of course, the original Cardia was two leads, two thumbs. Right. The Apple Watch is two leads. You put your one finger, your finger on the stem, and then it reads your wrist. Uh, a traditional EKG is 12 leads, and of course, much more accurate as a result. This is a six lead, though. That's pretty good. How, pretty does, good. It, how does it do six leads from just two fingers? I don't know. Science. <laughs> AI. You have all the answers. I don't know. It's got two sensors on top and now a third on the bottom. It's so magical. you put it on your thigh. So your left oh. leg. Oh. So well, what? I gotta pull my pants up, or I gotta start wearing skirts. Wear skirts, larger muscles. Actually, it's an excuse to wear shorts. In fact, yep. can you do it? Oh, you don't want to see me in shorts. You do not want to see me in shorts. My no. thighs have not seen sunlight since 1976. You don't want to see oh, me. Oh, you're shorts. probably a Fitzpatrick type one. <laughs> What's that? Well, I was reading on this. It turns out this is relevant to the uh, the Google AI skin thing. There are uh, these Fitzpatrick types. There are six of them. Type one, pale white, always burns, never tans. Is that you? Uh, oh, I, I burn. Like yeah. Type six, darkest brown, never burns. The best accuracy was achieved on two through four. So not quite as accurate on darker skins or, or yours, right. really pale skins. Um, the accuracy was similar to uh, actually even a little bit better then the uh, general practitioner, 69 to 72% accurate. The top three accuracy, 91 to 94% accurate. That's pretty strong. It's good enough. Gives it's, you some and idea. And I like, I like that they had to parcel out, parcel, partition out the data so they could say it's accurate on this type of skin. Isn't that interesting? Which really matters. Yeah. This is what you should do with face recognition. Well, it's really critical, important yeah. with, with race as well and what the learning set is. Yes. Right. Well, this so is, this, this gets is, uh, to... This gets to this FDA thing I was trying to talk about, which is as we start bringing in machine learning products into medical devices, which is important, um, we're going to need a process for when they retrain their algorithms for making sure that it's it works better than the other one, for example. 
So just like if you have a new formulation of the drug, you have to go through new testing things. The FDA is trying to figure out what's the process by which you should update your machine learning algorithms in a medical device. And I think it's really fascinating because they're talking about like how to do reproducibility, how to make sure your data sets, you know, are all in comp- like a good sample size, I guess. Um, it's trying it's a really tough things. problem. Yeah, well, and standardize it and also do it in a way to make sure that, you know, the the Fitzpatrick one people also, you know, you know who this is not going to work for, for right. example. Yeah. It's trying to well, ben, not ben Evans, get rid of bias, ahead, but address it and make sure that people are aware of it and it's communicated. In his in his piece that we already mentioned, Ben Evans uses the now classic example with AI that if you have a bunch of pictures with rulers on them next to the lesion, um, then at some point, if you don't do things right, your AI will identify skin with ruler. rulers as skin with cancer, period. <laughs> right. Excellent example. Yeah. Every right. time I see a ruler, there's cancer. cancer. Right. 